The good news is that NASA is fairly confident in its ability to track asteroids large enough to seriously disrupt human life upon impact, and detection efforts are improving. Scientists are also working on developing These are the most likely to destroy the world. A new report claims to offer the first science-based list of global risks with a potentially infinite impact, where in extreme cases, all human life could end. Those risks, the authors argue, include everything from climate change to supervolcanus to artificial intelligence by infinite impact. The authors, LED by Dennis Pamelon of the Global Challenge Foundation and Stuart Armstrong of the Future of Humanity Institute, mean risks capable of either causing human extinction or leading to a situation where civilization collapses to a state of great suffering and does not recover. The good news is that the authors aren't convinced. We're doomed. Pamela and Armstrong are of the view the humans have a long time left possibly millions of years. The dinosaurs were around for 135 million years, and if we are intelligent, there are good chances that we could live for much longer they write. Roughly 108 billion people have ever been alive, and Pamela and Armstrong estimate that if humanity lasts for 50 million years, the total number of humans who will ever live is more like three quadrillion. That's an optimistic assessment of humanity's prospects, but it also means that if something happens to make humans go extinct, the moral harm done will be immense. Guarding against events with even a small probability of causing that is worthwhile. So the report's authors conducted a scientific literature review and identified 12 plausible ways it could happen. One catastrophic climate change. The scenario that the authors envision here into DC, 3.6F warming of, the kind that climate negotiators have been fighting to avoid for decades. It's warming of 4 or 6 Celsius, 7.2 or 10.8F, a truly horrific scenario, which it's not clear humans could survive. According to a 2013 World Bank report, there is also no certainty that adaptation to a foresee world is possible. Warming at that level would displace huge numbers of people as sea levels rise and coastal areas become submerged. Agriculture would take a giant hit. Pamlin and Armstrong also express concern about geoengineering and such an extreme warming scenario. Things like spraying sulfate particles into the stratosphere to cool the earth may start to look attractive to policymakers or even private individuals but the risks are unknown and pamela and armstrong conclude that the biggest challenge is that geoengineering may backfire and simply make matters worse to nuclear war the good news here is that nuclear war could only end humanity under very special circumstances limited exchanges like the USS, bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II would be humanitarian catastrophes, but couldn't render humans extinct. Even significantly, larger exchanges fall short of the level of impact Pamelon and Armstrong require, even if the entire populations of Europe, Russia and the USA were directly wiped out in the nuclear war an outcome that some studies have shown to be physically impossible given population dispersal and the number of missiles in existence that would not raise the war to the first level of impact which requires greater than 2 billion affected pamela and armstrong right so why does nuclear war make the list because of the possibility of nuclear winner that is if enough nukes are detonated World temperatures would fall dramatically and quickly, disrupting food production and possibly rendering human life impossible. It's unclear if that's even possible or how big a war you need to trigger it. But if it is a possibility, that means a massive nuclear exchange is a possible cause of human extinction. Three global pandemic. As with nuclear war, not just any pandemic qualifies. Past pandemics, like the Black Death 
or the Spanish flu of 1918, have killed tens of millions of people, but failed to halt civilization. The authors are interested in an even more catastrophic scenario. Is that possible? Medicine has improved dramatically since the Spanish flu, but on the flip side, transportation across great distances has increased, and more people are living in dense, urban areas. That makes worldwide transmission much more of a possibility. Even the pandemic that killed off most of humanity would surely leave a few survivors who have immunity to the disease. The risk isn't that a single contagion kills everyone, it's that a pandemic kills enough people that the rudiments of civilization, agriculture, principally, can be maintained, and the survivors die off. For ecological catastrophe, as Recline interviews Elizabeth Colbert about mass extinctions, ecological collapse refers to a situation where an ecosystem suffers a drastic, possibly permanent, reduction in caring capacity for all organisms, often resulting in mass extinction. The report explains, mass extinctions can happen for a number of reasons, many of which have their own categories. On this list, global warming, an asteroid impact, etc. The journalist Elizabeth Colbert has argued that humans may be in the process of causing a mass extinction event, not least due to carbon emissions. Given that humans are heavily dependent on ecosystems, both natural and artificial, for food and other resources, mass extinctions that disrupt those ecosystems threaten us as well. Five global system collapse. This is a vague one, but it basically means the world's economic and political systems collapse by way of something like a severe, prolonged depression, with high bankruptcy rates and high unemployment, a breakdown in normal commerce caused by hyperinflation, or even an economically caused sharp increase in the death rate, and perhaps even a decline in population. The paper also mentions other possibilities like a coronal mass ejection from the sun that disrupts electrical systems on Earth. That said, it's unclear whether these things would pose an existential threat. Humanity has survived past economic downturns, even massive ones like the Great Depression. An economic collapse would have to be considerably more massive than that to risk human extinction or to kill enough people that the survivors couldn't recover. 6. Major Asteroid Impact Major asteroid impacts have caused large-scale extinction on Earth in the past, most famously, the Chicxulub impact, 66 million years ago, is widely believed to have caused the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. In alternative theory, blames volcanic eruptions, about which more in a second, theoretically, a future impact could have a similar effect. The good news is that NASA is fairly confident in its ability to track asteroids large enough to seriously disrupt human life upon impact, and detection efforts are improving. Scientists are also working on developing ways to deflect asteroids that would have a truly devastating effect, such as by crashing spacecraft into them with enough force to change their path, avoiding Earth 7. Super volcano. As with asteroids, there is historical precedent for volcanic eruptions causing mass extinction. The Permian Triassic extinction event, which rendered something like 90% of the Earth species extinct, is believed to have been caused by an eruption. Eruptions can cause significant global cooling and can disrupt agricultural production. They're also basically impossible to prevent, at least today, though they're also extremely rare. The office conclude, another Permian-Triassic-level eruption is extremely unlikely on human timescales, but the damage from even a smaller eruption could affect the climate, damage the biosphere, affect food supplies, and create political instability. As with pandemics, the risk in so much that the event itself will kill everyone, so much as that it'd make continued survival untenable for those who live through it. 8. Synthetic Biology
This isn't a risk today, but it could be in the future. Synthetic biology is an emerging scientific field that focuses on the creation of biological systems, including artificial life. The hypothetical danger is that the tools of synthetic biology could be used to engineer a super virus or super bacteria that is more infectious and capable of mass destruction than one that evolved naturally. Most likely, such an organism would be created as a biological weapon, either for a military or a non-state actor. The risk is that such a weapon would either be used in warfare or a terrorist attack, or else leak from a lab accidentally. Either scenario could wind up threatening humanity as a whole if the bioweapon spreads beyond the initial target and becomes a global problem. As with regular pandemics, actual extinction would only happen if survivors were unable to adapt to unpopulation decline. 9. Nanotechnology This is another potential risk in the future. The concern here is that nanotech democratizes industrial production, thus giving many more actors the ability to develop highly destructive weapons. Of particular relevance is whether nanotechnology allows rapid uranium extraction and isotope separation, and the construction of nuclear bombs, which would increase the severity of the consequent conflicts. Pamlin and Armstrong Ripe Traditional balance of power dynamics wouldn't apply if individuals and small groups were capable of amassing large, powerful arsenals. There's also a concern that self-replicating nanotech would create a gray goose scenario in which it grows out of control and encroaches upon resources humans depend on, causing mass disruption and potentially civilizational collapse. 10. Artificial Intelligence the report is also concerned with the possibility of exponential advances in artificial intelligence. Once computer programs grow advanced enough to teach themselves computer science, they could use that knowledge to improve themselves, causing a spiral of ever-increasing superintelligence. If AI remains friendly to humans, this would be a very good thing indeed, and has the prospect to speed up research in a variety of domains the risk is that ai has little use for humans and either out of malevolence or perceived necessity destroys us all 11 future bad governance this is perhaps the vaguest item on the list a kind of meter risk most of the problems enumerated above would require some kind of global coordinated action to address. Climate change is the most prominent example, but in the future, things like nanotech and AI regulation would need to be coordinated internationally. The danger is that governance structures often fail and sometimes wind up exacerbating the problems they were trying to fix. A policy failure in dealing with a threat that could cause human extinction with us have hugely negative consequences. 12 Unknown Unknowns The first 11 items on the list are risks we can identify as potential threats worth tackling. There are almost certainly other dangers out there with great potential impacts that we can't predict. It's hard to even think about how to tackle this problem, but more research into global catastrophic risks could be helpful.